Hi everybody. This morning I went to a, how do I say it, spectacular, maybe uh, last ever shareholders meeting, uh, which was amazing. I got to see uh, Catherine Powell, Daniel Delcourt, and that was pretty amazing. Now there's one thing that can top it all and a dream for a lot of Disneyland Paris fans. Getting a tour around the park with Tony Baxter, the, in my eyes, genius behind Disneyland Paris. And that dream is going to become a reality in just 20 minutes. So I'm excited. We had lovely weather over the past days. It is a bit clouded, but nothing can stand in the way of a park tour with the one and only Tony Baxter. I thought I'd start down here and tell you a little bit about um, the whole philosophy of the park. And then we'll walk down Main Street and discuss the sequencing of the lands. The hotel, we thought, well, it'll just be emulating a hotel. It'll just be a nice artificial inn. And when we showed it to management, we, they, we thought, well, they'll love it. They'll give us extra money for this. And he said, no, uh, we love the idea, but where are you going to get the money? And I said, well, I thought maybe you'd like it and we'd get to build this extra thing. And, and Michael says, well, what if we made it a real hotel? And I, it just about, we all were just flabbergasted because the idea of building a hotel that actually participates in the park, that had never happened before. Change down here. Now the gazebo, Walt Disney wanted a gazebo exactly there at Disneyland. And they had to take it out because the flagpole went there. When we came to France, we thought it might be okay to have an American flag over in the corner. But it would not be right to put an American flag right smack dab in the center of the park. So we all thought about it. We said, what if we bring back Walt Disney's idea and build the gazebo here? So this is, this is the only Disneyland park that has what Walt Disney originally conceived for the center of town square. Just spout well, off on anything. I have a sentimental question. Yes. The Flores Boutique, although I love it a lot. Okay, I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> that little, the little uh, stand in there for the photographer's studio and everything, I miss that too, but I worked heavily with Kodak when we did Journey into Imagination for Epcot. They were one of the biggest companies in America, and all of a sudden, the little things you're holding in your hand. How many are using film today inside that? Is there film in there? No. <laughs> no. So all of a sudden we had a shop that it didn't work anymore. There was nothing that could be sold there. Uh, even the SD cards, they have such capacity now. I, I remember having to buy four or five SD cards when they were eight gigabytes, you know, to come on a trip like this. Now you get one that's 128 or 200 and you know, whatever, 56, and it lasts for like three trips. So there's there's no uh, reason to have that store. So unfortunately, 
you know, Disneyland is not a museum. That's the thing I've had to, we grow up with things that we love and if it was a museum, they might stay there forever, but it's a living, breathing thing that has got to be relevant to new children. And this is a good example. I remember putting in Jasmine's Palace to a, a ride we have in California, Storybook Land. We have one here too. So we took out one of the older scenes and we put in Jasmine's Palace from Aladdin. And all of the old timers like, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you're disrupting Walt Disney. But I wrote it one day and there was a little girl in the boat and she was sitting there and she goes, mommy, look, it's Jasmine's house. And I realized, unfortunately, we have that problem of making it still very appealing and comfortable for the generations who grew up with it. But the younger kids have to find their childhood in the park too. So you know, that's what we deal with. All right, so let's... At one time, we were going to make Main Street a little bit more modern, like into the 1920s, because we found that in Europe, America was beginning to be interesting only after the development of technology. The jazz age had happened where there was a new type of music. There was the automobile and cities like Detroit and Chicago that came into being after the invention of cars. So it wasn't like here where everything is built around lake uh, or a river traffic pretty much and uh, the distribution was via horse cars and whatnot so your cities have a different feel it's more romantic in the states everything is, is big and uh, post automobile so there was an interest in that there was even an interest in the gangsters you know so we put together what if we moved it forward to uh, 1920 then michael had a bad dream one night he says we can't destroy walt disney's dream we have to take it back and make it look like all the other Disneylands. But we knew in Paris, Victorian architecture is something you created. So to make it a little more distinctively America, we put up a lot of these billboards and advertisements that give it kind of that brash, kind of young country look of America. Okay. To the hub, and this is as old as Greece, the idea of a spoke and wheel organizational system. I know we've tried to come up with other ways of doing this in Epcot and other parks, but actually in terms of making it simple for the guests to understand, and of course you've all, since you're fans, you've gone to other companies' parks and whatnot, and I honestly don't think there's a better way to orient the guests as to where they are, because you come into here and it's sort of neutral, and you have all these different choices of Adventureland and Frontierland and Discoveryland, Fantasyland, all beckoning with adventures that are very distinctly different. And the other thing I feel about Disneyland in general that Walt Disney began, and we haven't changed much, is those words, Adventureland and Frontierland and Fantasyland, they're very clear on what kind of things you would expect in there as a guest, and they're very clear to the designers what it is we need to design that goes in there. All right. I think we're at the edge of the rivers of the far west. And they're not any real river in particular, they're just indicative of uh, the look of very many different rivers that might flow through the, the western area, the Colorado and the Pecos River and so forth. Um, I, I don't like that you're getting a picture of the lights on right now. <laughs> I apologize for that. About what that matter. Yes. And I'll, I'll say, the Phantom Manor uh, is a different show from anything we've done before. Um, some of the things in there are a little more scary than what you'd find in California. And we don't have the narration, which was something that we rely on heavily in California. We did record the famous actor Vincent Price in one of his last performances doing that. I believe you can still hear him laughing at the end of the stretching room. Um, I would like someday to think about bringing that back. He speaks with an American accent in French, and a lot of people were uh, felt that, that we shouldn't use that, but I thought later, why did I let myself be talked out of that? Because if it was an American gold baron, he would have an American accent. We, we love seeing films with French because it makes it romantic, because that language is very romantic, so hearing the accent is good for us in America, and, and so I think having 
an American accent would have a similar feeling for the French, but maybe I'm wrong. I was told I was wrong, but I think that would be really good. So that ride is very different. I think it was technically ahead of its time, and what's really exciting is now that technologies are coming into being that are going to allow us to uh, really fulfill some of the dreams we had for that. I think, you know, far in the future we're going to see some changes in there that will, will be uh, to your liking to make it more, bring those effects really to life. Um, okay, so we're moving now into the south. Remember this Pirates from the 20th anniversary when I was here of being beautiful and finished, okay? So I went into it this week and it's like construction. There's nothing there. I mean, the figures are gone, the sets are all being repainted, the trees are all being t replaced and all this stuff. So it was weird. It was real. I, I had, I thought they were going to go in, you know, the feather duster in um, Beauty and the Beast, you know, I thought a little bit of polish here and there. And no, it's like start over. It's like they are literally rebuilding that ride and adding new things. And so it, it was, it was unique. Whereas when I saw that pirate ride, he was talking about I got to ride on the pirate ride. It was the day that Walt Disney died and the ride wasn't ready, uh, but I'd never seen a pirate ride. There were no figures in it. It was dead quiet. There were no songs being played. They were just moving the boats through. And I was out there at the park because I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. My, my hero had just died that day and I was just a young kid and I, I said, I looked in the window and the boats were going and I walked over to the employee thing and the, the, the man said, I said, well, could I ride on it? And, and he says, yeah, sure, get in. And to ride through that ride for your first time in your life when nobody's seen a pirate ride anywhere in the world and all the time you're going, oh, Walt Disney just died today. That was just, that was, you know, a shock. So, you know, this was very different. This was remembering it being finished and beautifully lit and all that. And now it's all work lights and scaffolding and all the work going on to put in the new things and uh, so it was, it was strange but I what excited me about it is how much work is going on I know it's going to surprise everybody by how great it is when, mm. when it reopens. We hope so too. Is there a date on like when that's coming back? Pirates? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's in July? July yeah. okay July and now I know why it's taking so much time because they're doing so much work you know it's going to be beautiful. It waited the longest. <laughs> well, I held that spot while you were giving it. Oh, that. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, you're going to love this. You will remember it like yesterday. You, you and I go way back. Way back. Oh, my gosh. We haven't aged a bit either. No, uh -uh. Where, where was this? Or do you, do you, it's in California. Yeah. NFFC. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> From, wow. Probably 92. Yeah. yeah. So that well, that would have been right at the opening then <laughs> of this. Right? So thank you. Okay. I was going to have you sign the iPhone, but no, that's probably a bad yeah, I think idea. that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, the annual report. Oh, well, let me show you. Look at look who uh, we have here. Oh, great. But you get the cover. Okay. I want, you want to ruin the cover? <laughs> I do. Do you want it signed to you or just sign? Yeah, I'll slide it back in. This is going to be easier than taking that on the tour. Yeah, okay. You don't have to talk as much here. I'm going to... Oh I brought a, a pen for that one. Okay. That was just last Saturday. Yeah, yeah. The night of the party. Yeah. And this is This like, is white ink, so okay. you could Should really... Okay, go on mine? Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, okay. Do you want it to you or just signed? Uh, two axles. Yeah. Okay. Axle. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. and thank you for the tour. We, yeah. we enjoyed it. Oh, good, okay. Especially the... I was good today. I The first one, I was kind of bumbling my way, but we had done that. So today I felt like, okay, I've got my act together today. Yeah, no, especially the part uh, on Pirates, the day that, mm. well, that I was just quite an emotional. It's, it's yeah, it was emotional. Quite, quite uh, goosebumps. Moments. I can now say it without starting to lose my voice, but for a long while I couldn't. Yeah. It really was. You know. Thank you so much for your okay. time. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank All you. right. So it's already the end of what I would call a very exciting day touring the park with Tony Baxter is like what it must have been in, in, in the early days of Disneyland touring the park with Walt well that's how I see it so it was a dream come true so yeah well it was great sharing it with you all you guys uh, 
I'm still a bit speechless. What well, doesn't happen? It doesn't happen that much. But thank you all guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel and see you all real soon. Bye bye.